But when I was born, there was no testing for it. They didn't even know I had EB. That like, at the beginning when I was born, I was missing like 25 to 50 percent of my skin. And then, as you know, once the baby's out of the womb, they're cleaning. As they're cleaning, the skin's still coming off because they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, because my skin's so fragile, they're trying to clean me. But when they're trying to clean me, they're tearing my skin. So they didn't know anything about that. I was in ICU for months, and then we found out specialists in Stanford know about EB, and that's when I was diagnosed with it a couple months after I was born. My name is Miguel Garcia. I'm 25 years old. I live in Santa Barbara, California, and I was born with epidermolysis globosa. Epidermolysis squillosa is a rare skin disorder that both parents must carry the gene in order for the child to be born with it. The basics about epidermolysis squillosa is my skin is very fragile. It's not too fragile, but it's fragile like a butterfly's wings. We call ourselves uh, butterfly children because our skin is so fragile it's like a butterfly um, any touch on the butterfly's wings can cause damage um, so any hard friction or if I get scraped or fall and scrape my skin can tear or glister on the everyday level is not too bad. Um, I'm so used to daily pain that I'm so immune to it, I don't even know what daily pain would be. But there are certain days when I do feel a lot more pain, uh, either when my wounds aren't doing so well or on shower days. Um, shower days are the worst. I kind of dread those because you just have, I have to undress at every bandage and get in the shower, wash up, get out and rewrap and it's just a hassle and after the whole process your body's just aching and that part's painful but I just gotta get through it or else where else would you be in life? for pain, because I'm in pain all the time, 24-7 pretty much, but I'm so immune to the pain I don't even really know it. Um, it has to be pretty deep, it has to be a deep pain or a really intense pain in order for me to either show it or at least be a little uncomfortable, but most of the time I try to stay at a decent level. Um, I've been two years sober from any painkillers. Uh, I've only stick to cannabis, so that's been nice. Um, I feel healthier about that, and, you know, not getting sick all the time, and, uh, not needing to take triple the dosage of what the bottle tells me to take in order to feel the painkiller. No.
take a deep breath. So what does that do pain-wise instantly for you? It just takes away all the, the tense. It just relaxes my body and just calms me down. Taking all those painkillers was just, it was, it was intense and it was just killing the insides, the insides of me. Um, I do have a feeding tube in right here on my chest. There's a hole pretty much in my stomach. So every time I would take painkillers, uh, the acids and the blood would start leaking. So, you know, I'd be leaking blood out of my stomach. I would feel sick. Um, so I hated that. Yeah, there are days when, you know, I'm more pain than other days, but. Again, it has, to, it has to be something to break me down. Infections will do it. Other than that, I'm happy, I'm smiling, I don't let pain get in the way. Or else, what the fuck would I be doing? I'd be laying here all day, every day, if I let pain be my excuse. Uh, so can you talk about a little bit how me and you came to do a documentary on the go? I work at uh, Galita Coffee and uh, he was always coming in. Eventually like I got introduced to Miguel and like we had similar interests and stuff like that so like we kicked in after work one day and I uh, really got to know him and he's like one of the nicest people I've ever met. Gabe, my neighbor, came over and said that he was looking for a, a documentary to do and something inspirational. And the uh, first thing that came to my mind was Miguel and his story. So I first met Miguel through my neighbor. And I, I was kind of talking to him about how I needed to find a documentary idea, something that was inspiring, some kind of story. And uh, he mentioned to me a little bit about Miguel's story and I found it super interesting. And I really had no idea what I was getting into. I'm really, really excited about Gabe and Miguel's big documentary that they have in the works. It has a lot of cool footage, a lot of serious footage that really opens your eyes and we need to get the word out. Uh, what's inspiring about Miguel is that he doesn't let his disorders stop him from living life day to day. He lives life to the absolute fullest, he doesn't let anything stop him, he still goes to music festivals. and still goes out downtown to bars and stuff and he's still able to do day-to-day -day things despite all the obstacles that he has to face and uh, to see something like that it's incredibly inspiring when i first met him i i was very touched and uh, it what makes me want to tell his story and share it with the world